I'm winemaker Amy LaBelle, and along with my husband, Cesar Arboleda, we offer you this behind the scenes sneak peek at what it's like to bring a big dream to life. A dream that took us 4,083 days to realize. Here, you'll see how we run a busy restaurant, farm and vineyard, event center, winery and tasting room, and how we produce the winemaker's kitchen culinary products, all while raising our two young sons. Everybody has dreams, and we hope this show inspires you and your family to create happiness, cook together, live healthy, and most of all, dream big. Hey there, how are you? Today we are bottling Moscato and uh, raw blueberry. So we got some here Moscato, we've been here pretty early this morning, we got that done out of the way. Now we move on to the blueberry. But the Moscato is actually sold out, so we're pretty excited about that. And now um, we're doing blueberry, but um, right now Amy's going to uh, walk you through the bottling line and show you how it is. Hi there. We're here in the bottling room at LaBelle Winery and I wanted to give you a quick tour so you could see exactly how wine gets from tank to bottle at LaBelle Winery and probably a lot of the world's wineries. Um, you know, this is a great machine. It's really brought us far forward in our processing when we were able to um, invest in this uh, wonderful bottling line. Before we had this line, we used to bottle our bottles all by hand, one by one, and it would take a crew of about six or seven people to bottle just a pallet of, of wine, which is you know maybe 60 to 100 cases. Um, it would take a whole day, a crew of six or seven people. It was a labor of love, but it was a lot of hard work. This bottling line has advanced us so far, and we are able to bottle with this um, 1,500 bottles an hour when it's running at its maximum. And uh, I think our record is something like 750 cases in a day. So it's definitely increased our productivity and lessened the amount of days that we spend bottling. We still have an awful lot of bottling days on the calendar between now, um, and we're in spring now, uh, until harvest when we need to have all the tanks empty so that we can receive the new grapes and all of the new juice and get our wines going again with the new batch. So let me give you a quick tour of the bottling line and then we'll show you some footage of the bottling line actually running. So first, this is the dump table. Bottles get um, dumped onto this table, uh, the case dumps upside down, which puts the bottles right side up. It's kind of counterintuitive. And then they roll down this, um, this uh, line and they are pulled in by these, um, these nodules that will bring them up and around to be rinsed. So this first station is a rinsing station and this kind of jets a powerful stream of water to clean your bottles. Do you know that only 20% of the world's wineries clean their bottles? I think that's kind of yucky. Uh, we work really hard on our wine and I want to put it into clean bottles. So first they get rinsed. Then they shoot down the line into this um, noodle which picks them up under station three, which is a sparger. This station uh, pushes nitrogen into a bottle thereby removing the oxygen. Um, so it's, it's a molecularly slightly different weight. And so the nitrogen will protect the wine um, from the oxygen that would have otherwise been filling the bottle. Now you know that when you have oxygen in your bottle at home, you know, once you've opened a bottle of wine, the oxygen starts working its way into that wine. And the wine isn't as good the next day or the day after that, right? So you've all probably experienced that. This prevents that from happening in the bottle because it fills it with, with nitrogen first or a different inert gas. I could use carbon dioxide here too. Then this station, uh, which is taken apart right now for cleaning, um, usually has spouts on it. Uh, this station is the filling station. The bowl up at the top uh, has, has wine pumped into it from the tanks that sit outside in the wine cellar. And the tank gravity feeds wine into the bottles. And it's a very gentle, very beautiful process. The bottles roll around and get filled. Then they shoot off that wheel and they come up here to get leveled. So if there's a little bit too much wine in the leveler, the uh, machine will remove it so that there's exactly 750 milliliters of wine in that bottle. And they're all at the same level. That's both aesthetic and for tax purposes. The government wants to make sure that I don't give you an extra milliliter of wine and then I haven't paid taxes on. That doesn't work. So we have to make sure they're exact. 
then the wine is uh, corked. The way the corker works is that the hopper up top drops a cork down into the chute and there's a camshaft there that drives um, in concert with when the bottle falls right under the, the, the proper spacing. And the cork is actually squeezed by some jaws to a pencil thin uh, width and then it's pushed into the bottle and it re-expands. I think that's pretty cool. So it gets really skinny, drops into the bottle and then pops back open. Actually takes about 24 hours for the cork to fully re-expand to its original size. So for that reason, we leave the bottles right side up for a day after we bottle them to make sure that everything's expanded back to where it needs to be. Then the bottles continue their journey down this path to the capsular. These capsules are metal alloy, really thin metal, and they drop onto the bottle top automatically. Then they roll down to this station, which is the sleeker station. These two heads roll two bottles at a time and they push that metal alloy cap right onto the top of the bottle and they, they make sure it's uh, stick, stuck on there and it's smooth, which is pretty cool. And then this last station is the labeling station. This is our trickiest station here and it gives us the most fuss and trouble. It's very, it's actually very weather dependent. So it doesn't like humidity or so, you know, and if the bottles are, are cooler than the air temperature, they can get, by the time they get all the way down the line here, they can get a little film of um, condensation on the outside the labels don't like that. So every once in a while, we'll bottle without labeling, depending on the weather, and we label another day. So then the uh, labeled bottles should be fully complete and ready to go to consumers at this point. So the person that's working here, so the person, there are two people to run this line. Uh, three, if we're having a really great day and we can have an extra runner to do, that, that makes things a little easier. But um, we can really operate this machine with two people, one at one end jumping the empty bottles and one at this end doing quality control and filling the cases. So I'm gonna show you a video of some bottling in process so you can see what that looks like. And I hope you'll come see it in person someday at LaBelle. So we finished bottling today. We did Moscato and dry blueberry, and it's been a long day, but I have to go home and feed my family. So I'll meet you back in the kitchen and show you how to make a Moscato vinaigrette and a beautiful salad. Today, I wanted to share with you how to make a very easy, very simple vinaigrette. You know, we're not all getting out to the store as much as uh, normal in this pandemic. And um, if you run out of salad dressing, no problem, you can make really great, really healthy, delicious vinaigrette at home with five or six simple ingredients, probably things you already have in your pantry. So I just wanted to show you how to put that together really fast. Um, I like to start, well, of course, because I'm a winemaker, everything I make usually has wine in it in some way. So I'm gonna make a wine vinaigrette. You can leave out the wine if you are sensitive to wine or if you have children and you're uncomfortable serving it to them. But if you still wanna use the wine, you can actually um, just boil it out for four or five minutes on the stove and that removes all of the alcohol. So either way, you can use the wine with the alcohol or without. I'm gonna go for it today, it's Friday. So in any way, you need a third of a cup. I'm just gonna eyeball this, but you can certainly measure it. Um, this is just a regular mason jar and this mason jar happens to have uh, measurement uh, coating on the side of it, but I can eyeball it. I'm gonna do about a third of a cup of uh, this is our Moscato. So this is LaBelle Winery Moscato wine. 
This has a beautiful crisp acidity and a little bit of sweetness. It's gonna be absolutely beautiful with the ingredients I've chosen for this salad, but you can use whatever white wine you have on hand. We like to say that LaBelle wine works best, but um, it certainly doesn't have to be. Whatever you've got on hand is just fine. Uh, we just bottled this though, and you've, you've seen that video already. So you saw the bottling process of this wine and I wanted to go ahead and have it for my happy hour tonight and also to incorporate it into this great, great salad dressing. Uh, the second ingredient next to the wine is going to be um, some olive oil. I've chosen to use today the um, Lemon Infused Winemaker's Kitchen olive oil. You can use any olive oil you have on hand and if you don't have olive oil, you can use canola oil, that's fine too. Um, I think you could even use vegetable oil, all good. Uh, but this lemon infused olive oil that we carry at the winery is made in Italy. It's infused with lemon peel and it is so delicious. So I'm gonna put this on the salad today because I've got a lot of fruit incorporated in my salad and I think the lemon's gonna be awesome. So we're gonna do a third of a cup of that lemon infused olive oil. And again, I'm just eyeballing, which is fine. And then I need a third of a cup of, I'm using today white vinegar, just regular generic white, white, white wine vinegar. If you have apple cider vinegar, that's fine. You can even do balsamic vinegar, a white balsamic would add probably a little bit of sweetness, a little bit more sweetness. But whatever vinegar you have on hand, I'm gonna go ahead and do a third of a cup of um, white wine vinegar because I really just wanted to keep this recipe uh, with the white wine and the white wine vinegar keep it a clear as possible recipe. All right, then we're gonna start seasoning. I've got two tablespoons of Dijon mustard. But using Dijon mustard is pretty important in this. You don't wanna use uh, yellow hot dog mustard. The Dijon works best. So just uh, scoop this in and you know, sometimes my favorite trick is when I'm at the bottom of a Dijon bottle, like if you're at the very bottom of your Dijon jar of, of mustard, and you, want, you haven't scraped out those last little bits, go ahead and put uh, all these ingredients right into that jar and shake it so you can get that last bit of mustard out and then you don't have to waste it. If you've been watching my videos, you know I'm a really frugal cook anyway. So I don't like to waste anything, not even the end of the Dijon bottle. Then a pinch of salt, however much salt you like. I kind of like salt, so. Uh, this is a sea salt. You don't want to use iodized salt. I think it leaves kind of a metallic taste. Um, I prefer to use sea salt in all my recipes. Uh, then I'm going to do a nice um, grind of fresh black pepper right into the jar. This is great because you can make this in the jar and then you can leave it in the jar in your fridge. So you can use it on a few salads all week. It's great. This actually is really lovely over pasta too. And then I like, I love Aleppo chili pepper. It's um, not as spicy as cayenne pepper, but it gives you just like a little bit of soft heat. And I love spicy things. So. And I love the color of this, it's beautiful. It's like this bright red. Aleppo is sometimes hard to find, but you can find it in specialty spice stores or online. Sometimes um, I can order it if I can't find it locally. And then you close up your jar and you shake it. And that's it. Vinaigrette, it's like the most beautiful French-based vinaigrette you can make. You know what's in it, it has no chemicals in it, and your family's just gonna love it. So uh, you can set that aside, vinaigrette's done. Easy breezy. I'm gonna put that on this gorgeous salad that I've got laid out today. I decided to do arugula. Arugula is a great lettuce because it's got a real black pepper, kind of a spicy bite to it. So we're gonna throw that in. I like to do my salads in a bowl before I plate them. So, We'll throw our arugula in there. I chose to use fennel today. That's wonderful in this salad. This fennel is uh, got a nice crisp bite to it and it tastes like a little bit like licorice and that, that acid on the fennel is gonna blend beautifully with our sweet ingredients. It's gonna be delicious. I'm gonna do some blueberries, some strawberries, some blackberries, some tomatoes, all different kinds. If I had gooseberries, which I love, I would use those too. Gooseberries are kind of husk tomato. They're very sweet and kind of interesting. And the last, I put in some pecans. I love uh, to have a nice crunch in the salad. I think it's really important to have a bunch of different textures in your salad. So here you've got soft and you've got crunchy, and this is all gonna be great with your vinaigrette. All right, the moment of truth. This very easy vinaigrette. 
We're gonna pour it over. Just give that a little splash. See how much you have left for the rest of the week. Now you don't have to buy salad dressing all week. So I like to make salads in a bowl like this so I can toss them so everything gets coated beautifully. And then for this, because it's got such a nice acidic bite to it, I'm gonna go ahead and add um, some goat cheese right on top when I plate it. I don't have a plate, but I'll show you what I would do if I had a nice white plate. I think food always looks so nice when it's plated on white things. You just pop it right out of that bowl that you mixed it in. Make a beautiful tall pile because I think we eat with our eyes first, right? So you want it to have some height and some color. And then before, right before I served it, I would sprinkle some uh, goat cheese crumbles on that. And I think that this makes a very beautiful, very healthy salad for your family. Enjoy.